Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Oh, welcome back to my channel. So we're here for another one of our mask making sessions. And if you joined me last week, what we did was we made those envelope pouches that I saw on Wendy's Journal Adventure. And I did mention um, that, you know, if you kept your little pieces that you cut off, the smaller ones that were kind of, you know, not great, obviously, for, you know, pockets on their own, um, we could do something else with them. So I've come along with some of mine. Now, I haven't got a great deal of them there. I've got a confession to make. I actually couldn't find mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I obviously put them somewhere safe to keep them for the week. And then, you know, like all good things that... You put somewhere safe, I can never find them again. So yeah, I had to then quickly um, cut off a few more ends to use. And then I've just got a couple more envelopes here which are already glued down, so I can just cut a couple more. So I'll go through the process like this for anyone who didn't see last week's video, if you see what I mean. Um, so that you kind of know, you know, what we're doing from scratch. But basically what you're going to need is you're going to need some tallish envelopes, um, these I think here are called like DL size envelopes. They're like the regular size envelopes that you get your mail in. Um, and then you're going to need obviously your scissors, some glue. And then I've brought along a bunch of papers to decorate my pockets up with. So just, you know, a, a variety of papers and things like that. Um, then you may want to have a spreader or something to actually, you know, be able to press your glue down. And aside from that, you might want to have some things to decorate and things like that. I think that's probably all you're going to need other than maybe your, um, you know, blending tool and things. But yeah, that should be kind of everything that you need, really. So if I just show you from scratch for those people who, as I say, didn't watch last week, what you're going to do is, in fact, I'll start from scratch properly with a totally fresh envelope. So you're going to take your envelope and what you want to do, first of all, is glue down your flap, oops, your flap, like that. Oh gosh, please don't have glue problems already today. No, 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 don't want that straight away from the off, do we? No way, right, okay. So <clears throat> you're going to glue down your flap. Sorry, just checking my um, pin is into my glue now like that and then what you're going to do now you're going to probably want your envelope slightly taller your you know your base piece so you're going to cut off the end like this so as you've got then a small piece that's obviously you know that was on the end and then you've got a tallish pocket like that and then all you're going to do is you're going to make your pocket up by using the piece that you've just cut off and hopefully you might have a couple of extra pieces as well from last week so you can just you know judge them kind of the sizes that you want them to be now I like to put them upside down like this so that you've got a proper thick you know strong pocket if you put them this way up which of course you can do I just always feel that's quite flimsy whereas if I put them this way up they're really strong pockets then. So, you know, completely up to you kind of which way you want to glue them. But then what you're going to have is effectively a pocket here at the top, a pocket here and a pocket here. So all I'm going to do is obviously decorate up my pocket. So if I just grab in some decorative papers. Now, this paper here is just on, um, you know, regular copy paper paper. So it's not kind of too thick or anything. It's not going to, you know, really kind of make my piece very bulky or anything like that. You could use scrapbook paper. I mean, just probably a word of, um, you know, caution is just if you're using like a paper pad, just don't, you know, don't use one that's too thick. Because if it's, of course, too, too thick, it's going to then bulk out your pocket quite a bit. So I would just recommend using, you know, finish finished scrapbook paper I mean to be honest copy paper is you know quite an ideal thickness really for this type of thing because then you're really not bulking it out too too much so just going across there I'm literally at the end of my at the end of my tether with my glue um 
I did have a comment I had to laugh uh, from Sherry. And um, yes, Sherry, I completely agree. You know, rubbish, 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 rubbish glue. The problem is, I mean, over here, I've talked about this before, we don't have a whole bunch of craft stores, really. We just have kind of, you know, the main one that I go to is called The Range. And that's because that's quite close to where I live. Um, we had one open quite close to where I live uh, about a year ago, I think. Um, aside from that, we have Hobbycraft, which does carry probably a better selection of glues. They tend to be quite pricey. Um, it's not that close to where I live. But also, I don't know about you guys, I've tried quite a lot of different glues. And I just always come back to this tacky glue, which... Although it's very problematic of late, you know, getting it out of the bottle, it is really good, um, you know, gluing strength. And, you know, of course, that's what we're looking for, isn't it? Something that's going to really hold your project together really well. So, yeah, although I, I do agree, Sherry, what rubbish, rubbish glue. And the other thing that's worth noting, this glue caused me no problems practically all summer. It definitely is a temperature issue because the second that the weather gets colder, the glue starts clogging up again. So, you know, whilst I do hear what you're saying, Sherry, and why, why am I sticking with that glue? I have no idea, but that's, well, I do have an idea and that's why is because, you know, I just haven't found a glue really that is as good, um, you know, for holding things together. I mean, I have tried the glue sticks which, you know, I have to say, I didn't really like that much. Um, you know, and I just never have faith in them to actually, you know, stay stuck down. Um, so I just always end up coming back to this tacky glue. And like I say, annoyingly, you know, on the whole, this is fine. But annoyingly, it just seems to be something to do with temperature that then it you know, it plays up and, um, yeah, it's just, it's frustrating. And obviously if I wasn't doing videos, it wouldn't be half so frustrating. I mean, obviously it's made much more frustrating from the fact I'm, I'm doing videos. So, um, yeah, probably, probably if I wasn't doing videos, it wouldn't be quite such a, you know, quite such a disaster to be honest. And I'd probably just then, you know, put up with it and not feel so bothered really but um yeah that's why I stick with that glue it's just because I really do like the fact that it does really hold things down really really well okay I mean I have seen some people use um that the tacky glue that comes in like the gold um tube I can't remember now what that's called but I have tried that before and I found a few things with it actually I mean it's long-term holding power I'm sure was absolutely fine but I did not find it very quick drying I mean actually this they do seem to have kind of made worse from the point of view of it doesn't dry as quickly as I feel it used to um but that other glue I feel like really takes a long time so um yeah, still, you know, still come back to this. So then we're going to just cover the bottom section. So I'll just take another sheet of decorative paper there. And then I don't know whether you noticed in between my rambling actually, but all I actually did was then glued the pocket shut at the bottom as well. So just going to stick this on here. like this okay like that and then we'll just cut around there again as I always say you know you can cut your piece of paper to size prior to sticking it onto the envelope piece if you find that easier I mean I just don't because to be honest I would just you know not cut it accurately and then it would be you know all over the place and then what I do is what I did with this this piece as well is I just run some glue along here 
to then, oops, I don't think a single bit of glue came out there. So I just run a little bit of glue in here. Oops, can't see now because the um, way the light's catching it. Just to then hold that closed like that. And then all I'm going to do is glue my two pockets down on top of my back piece like that. So just grab your glue again. Okie dokie, oops. And then just pop them down. So I like to just have this here sort of roughly resting so as I can see whereabouts I need that pocket because otherwise I could end up, oh, thank you. Just my husband bought me a cup of tea. Um, because you could end up putting it too high and then you could end up with a gap here. So you just want to be a bit mindful of that type of thing. So press that pocket down on there like that. And then this one here. And of course you could stitch these, you know, you don't have to glue them. Um, I'm just obviously gluing them because, you know, I'm aware not everybody has a sewing machine. Not everyone likes using a sewing machine, you know. So, and I think the glued pockets are just as nice. Absolutely, you know, no problem there with kind of gluing them instead. So, just lovely, aren't they? And um, you can just obviously trim them up a little bit. If, like me, you've just got odd pieces of paper hanging over. So, like that. But as I say, you know, if you want to, you could just stitch around on, like, the three sides. So, you've got your pocket at the top, your pocket here, and your pocket here. So, I'm just going to pop that to one side, and we can make another one. So, I'll talk you through again, and, um, you know then I will obviously be quiet about the process because, I mean, they're not overly complicated, but just so that we all, you know, really know what we're doing. So I'm just going to take my tall envelope, again, glue the flap straight down like that. And then just chop that off like that. Okay, and the other thing that you can do is I obviously covered the entire envelope um, with my decorative paper just now. So if I just pull this back in to kind of explain what I mean. I covered the entire length of the envelope with the patterned paper. So, of course, that's bulking it out further. I mean, then, you know, it's not a bulky pocket. But if you didn't want to do that, I mean, of course, you know, you could get away with using really, you know, tiny pieces of scraps, really, because you could just cover sort of that top section. So let me just have a look through my scraps, scraps pile here that's in my scrap bin. So, for instance, I've got here, you know, this is really quite a tiny piece. But what I could do is get away with just using that. So just chop that down so it's kind of a bit tidier to use. And then all I'm going to do is just pop that down there. Like that. Oops. Like that. I mean, it's not on there very straight or anything, you know, but it really doesn't matter because this is not going to obviously be visible when we stick our pockets down. So trim that down at the side. Oh, I didn't even realise that was double-sided. Look, I didn't even stop to, to look or to concentrate. And then we'll just put some sheet music onto our next piece. So 
again, just pulling in your next pockets to, you know, just decide sort of which way round you want them. So if I just then trim some sheet music. So, I mean, by doing it this way, you know, you really can, you know, do some scrap busting because you really wouldn't need particularly very much paper at all to cover these little tiny types, you know, little tiny, <laughs> these little tiny pieces. Let's just say that. So, and of course, you know, this then is less bulky still. So, um, you know, if you are worried about it kind of bulking out your pocket, this is kind of even less bulky. So just going to pop that on like that and then hopefully got that straight-ish and I'll just chop around there okay That. and then again all I'm going to do is just glue this pocket closed here like that and then we can just pop this pocket down And again, I'm just going to kind of bring this in as a guide so that I know roughly where, you know, it needs to definitely be, if you see what I mean. Okay, like that. And then just place that one down. So, oops, I'm not sure how straight I've got that, but hopefully it's okay. So just stick that down like that. And then, sorry, I'm for some reason dragging all sorts of bits in every time I move. Uh, right, and then we can just do another piece. So let me just see whether I've got any other scraps that, you know, really would kind of tone nicely. I mean, you could always just use some, um, you know, plain coffee dyed paper even, that would still look good. Just having a quick look through. Oh, that's annoying. I can't find anything that's going to look really, really nice with that. Um, ah. And that's why I shouldn't really go off as a tangent, should I? But I, I was just wanting to demonstrate, really, that, you know, you really can. Oh, that's going to look pretty, isn't it? You really can, you know, use up some really quite tiny scraps. You don't have to use like a full sheet of paper. You know, using tiny scraps, you're going to get rid of, you know, quite a bit. And, you know, they're going to easily cover these little tiny envelope pieces. So, yeah, it's quite a good one. Okay, so I'll just quickly do this last one. And then, of course, we can just relax and have a nice time. And I won't won't bore you anymore with kind of talking you through the process. So, like that. Oops, still got glue seeping out there. Okay. Oops. I've moved my camera and um, I think I said this a couple of weeks ago, but I've moved it because it, well, it actually was kind of, flopping around a bit at the back of my desk the um you know the bolt had sort of come loose and lost some of its like tread or thread thread stuff to be able to screw onto the table so I've had to well do something kind of bodgy with it and it's now hanging on the side of my desk I have to say it's really in the way so um I need to kind of check it out really and do some more you know another bit of thinking really because um yeah, where I've got it now is not, not really ideal. <clears throat> I might have to um, stop the video in a minute and see if I can move it slightly. 
And then, of course, we'll just glue this down. Oh, I was on a roll with my glue suddenly, and now it's now it's come to a stop again. So grinding halt. Oh, come on! Come on! Don't let the side down. Prove everyone wrong. Prove everyone wrong with with working here. Come on! I meant I meant the glue. Prove everyone wrong, not me. I'm just proving everyone right constantly that yes, it is rubbish. Okay, right. There we go. And again, just press that down like that. So they're really nice pockets, aren't they? And you know, obviously super, um, you know, frugal or super econom economical. <laughs> With your envelopes because of course you could use junk mail envelopes for these <clears throat> particularly these smaller pieces um you know my junk mail tends to all be torn at the edges but you know if you have got some that you could neatly kind of glue back together you could always use that so i'm going to just switch my camera off and try and move my camera position okay let's see how we get on with it now it's a lot higher so hopefully it's not going to be quite so in my way it was really kind of you know, obstructing my my space really. Okay, right. Let's get going again. So yeah, I won't obviously bother talking everyone through for a third one because I'm sure that you know you've all kind of seen enough now or heard enough. So um, yeah, we can just relax now and have a nice time. So I hope everyone's having a good week. Obviously, I'm filming this on the Monday. I know I always do say this, but yeah, I like to film these on the Monday ready to go out on the Tuesday. So it's kind of, you know, fresh in the week for me. Okay, just picking, picking which paper I'd like to use, I think, for this one. So, oops. Yeah, I've got a different one, hold on. Okay, oops. Okay, right. Yeah, so um, it's kind of new, new week really, but yeah. It's a bit of a drab day today. Not got lovely sunshine or anything. We had such a lovely couple of days um, last week, and then we had such a gorgeous day on Saturday. It was really, really, really lovely weather. And um, yeah, was able to do like a lovely walk. We went down to the beach and did a lovely walk on the beach. I mean, obviously, you know, it wasn't kind of like sunbathing weather or anything like that. You know, we were wrapped up with our coats and things, but it was just lovely. And, um, you know, the sun was shining. It was, oh, just a gorgeous, gorgeous day. You know, which of course, we're so lucky, you know, that um, the weather was like that because it was obviously the first weekend of being on lockdown. And, um, you know, on on our second time of lockdown, which, I mean, if you're in the UK or, well, anywhere where you're now going, you know, undergoing kind of a second lockdown, how are you finding that? We were saying that, strangely enough, this seems in some ways worse than the first time. I've just noticed I'm not in frame at all. Hold on. Right, hopefully that's better. Um... We were saying that actually this time round seems a bit worse, I think, because first time round, there was almost like a little bit of a novelty factor. You know, when the lockdown first happened, because none of us had ever been in a lockdown before. So it was kind of like, oh, this, you know, this is fun. We can do this. We can do that. And then this time, I just noticed that sort of the day was dragging <laughs> a couple of times, um, you know, and it was kind of like, oh, what should we do now? And, um, yeah, it was a little bit sort of strange. I mean, we are so lucky that we were obviously able to go out for walks and things like that still. And, you know, go out for exercise. Because I know that, you know, not all countries, I think, have had that kind of lockdown. So, from that point of view, that's incredibly, you know, valuable. Um, because I think, you know, that really is needed. I'm just going to zoom out slightly. I think that is really needed, you know, to just keep your 
well, keep your sanity a little bit. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so it was lovely. We were able to have a really nice, you know, get some fresh air and things. But yeah, today looks very drab by comparison. But hey, you know, who cares? It's Monday now, so um, the weekend's over. Everyone's back to school, back to work. So, you know, I, I mean, I don't really go out particularly anyway because I would just be in working all day. So, um, you know, I'm not really too worried being completely selfish. <laughs> I mean, obviously, there are people who are out and about in it. So um, you know, it can't be great for those people, but... Okay, I'll just go for this one. Oh, we had a, um, a bit of fun with our weekly shop this week. So I know that I mentioned before that, you know, I mean, my boys, they're 14 and, you know, my oldest one's going to be 18 on New Year's Eve. So, I mean, obviously they're, you know, they're growing boys. Um, and oh my gosh, they just eat and eat and eat. And I know that, you know, lots of you have commented and said that you've had boys and yes, don't they just eat you out of house and home. And during the last lockdown, all I heard constantly was, oh, we haven't got anything to eat. Oh, it just drove me mad. We haven't got anything to eat. So this week they started going on already, you know, I can't even remember whether they were saying, I think they were saying that there wasn't anything to eat. And what's happened a bit is um, my husband is trying to, you know, be a bit more healthy. And he's normally the world's worst for eating the crisps and all of that kind of stuff. My daughter also is pretty bad. So she's like second, second in line with the, you know, terrible eating habits. And my boys actually, they're pretty good and don't particularly, you know, I would say don't particularly eat too much junk food at all. So, you know, they're quite good. So in order to kind of try and help my husband and my daughter, you know, my husband was like, that's it, you know, stop buying um, any, um, actually, I'm just going to go with the same paper again, I think. Um, stop buying any junk food, you know, let's have no junk food in the house. I mean, that doesn't worry me because I don't, you know, I don't eat the junk food. So, um, you know, I stopped buying the crisps and the biscuits and ugh, all the rest of that type of stuff. And we kind of switched over to buying much more fruit and all of that kind of things. Anyway, as a result, you know, I'm constantly hearing the kids kind of going, oh, there's nothing to eat, there's nothing to eat, you know. So this week they started saying it and we're going on about it again. Oh, I just was losing the world to live. So in the end, I just said, right, this week, what we're going to do, I'm going to split the weekly food shopping money um, you know, because I normally kind of take my, you know, my weekly food shopping money um, in cash to the supermarket. And, you know, I kind of do the supermarket shopping. And I said, right, this week I've had enough. What we normally spend on the food shopping, I'm going to split five, well, four ways, because obviously my daughter's only six. So, I mean, she can very well go and do a shop herself. But I said, I'm going to split it equally and we can all go into the shop and buy the things that we would like to have in the cupboards. Um, now, this <laughs> this sounded quite good at the time and then it kind of like got a bit more complicated. So it started out like that and, you know, I thought the boys would kind of say, oh, what, you know, no, they couldn't wait. Oh, this is awesome. What a brilliant idea they were saying. Then we obviously started talking a little bit more sensibly and kind of said, well, you know, who's going to get, like, say, the toilet roll? You know, whose budget's that going to come out of? And I thought, oh, nice, you know, going to end up with everything coming out of my budget. So I said, well, you know, what we'll do, I'll reduce slightly the amount that we're all going to have. And um, did I stick this down already? Oh, I must have done. Um, I'll reduce the amount that we're all going to have slightly. And what you can do is we will have a kind of like joint budget, you know, so we'll all have a little bit less than what I originally said. And then I will put that money in for what we call, you know, like the kind of communal items, i.e. the toilet paper, the, um, I don't know, sugar and tea bags and 
the like bathroom cleaner those kinds of things that of course nobody wanted coming out of their actual budget then we talked about you know there's also the things that we all like to have as a regular meal so because it's winter we like to have a roast every monday night um and we just use you know obviously my son and i we're vegetarian so we have like a what we call over here corn i'm not sure whether that's available everywhere in the world so yeah it's like a sort of um i'm just just gluing this because i'm not really convinced that i did glue this together um it's a meat substitute so we normally buy a corn roast you know and then obviously we get the vegetables um you know i'm pretty rubbish so i just use frozen roast potatoes <laughs> um frozen yorkshire puddings and then we buy um you know the sprouts and cauliflower and what have you so we talked about that and said well who's going to be buying the stuff for the roast dinner you know and things like that so we agreed that we would all buy being mindful of the food that we like to have on a regular basis and we would all take kind of something you know that we all like so you know like if there's um the roast dinner you know somebody would buy like stuff in somebody would buy you know the I don't know sprouts somebody would buy the you know the carrots the cauliflower and all of that kind of stuff so we kind of agreed on that and um you know said that that was all quite a good idea um and then I have to be truthful here we also agreed that you know my sons would go in and do their shopping first they would go together with their budget but they would shop separately, but, you know, so they're kind of like in the shop at the same time and they can just sort of say, oh, did you pick up this or, you know. Um, and the other agreement was, of course, although we were individually choosing the food, once the food was in the house and in the cupboard, you know, it was free for everybody to use. It wasn't kind of like, oh, hang on, I bought that. You know, it was just going to be then the food for the family. So, um, and I did also, <laughs> also say, you know, um, I do not want it because my husband said, oh, we're going to end up with nothing to eat. I said, that's fine because actually, you know, either way, this is a win-win situation because at the end of the day, I'm so fed up with hearing everyone moaning that there's nothing to eat. So the way I kind of saw it was actually by doing this, either everyone would be really happy with all the food that there is, you know, that no one's going to be moaning because they all chose their food themselves. Or there's going to genuinely be no food in the house because everyone's done such a silly shop, you know, that actually <laughs> nobody will moan ever again because they'll remember, obviously, this particular, you know, disaster, um, you know, for ages to come. So I just kind of thought, well, hopefully this is just going to be, you know, either way, a kind of hopefully winning situation. So, yeah, we did that. Now, I have to confess that we had started by saying you know what we would do is obviously my sons would go in and do their shop and we would kind of then be outside in the car then they would come and we would swap over um you know and then my husband and I would go in and kind of do our shop and you know he also was doing a separate shop because he's a meat eater I'm a vegetarian so you know we were all literally buying the things that we wanted to buy um and we did agree that we would look through what my sons had bought so that there weren't really duplicates and things like that. You know, if they'd bought, say, bananas, you know, somebody else didn't buy bananas. Um, now, what happened was obviously the time was ticking by and it was getting later and later. It was getting actually towards dinner time. And I thought, oh, we're just going to be here all day. So my husband and I did cheat and we ended up going into the shop. Oh, that envelope's not the same size. Um, we did end up going into the shop <clears throat> before, you know, the um, boys had finished their shopping. And that was where the mistake was, because, of course, we then didn't know what they had bought. But it was just like, oh, gosh, you know, we're going to be here all night and we'll then be late home to cook the dinner. So, um, yeah, we should have kind of stuck with how we agreed, really. But anyway, we didn't. So we went in the shop and did our shop. I mean, we weren't very long or anything, but it was quite fun. And when we got back out of the car, of course, you know, there were tons and tons of bags, you know, and I thought, oh my gosh, 
you know, this is just going to be a complete and utter disaster. Well, I have to say, the boys actually did an okay shop. Um, you know, we got home and we all kind of claimed our bags, you know, and kind of then looked through what everybody had actually bought. And, you know, I have to say I was kind of impressed because, I mean, obviously everybody had to go around the shop, you know, loosely adding up their shopping in their head because they only had the cash they had. Um, but, you know, pretty much everything that we needed did get purchased, you know, which was pretty good. The thing that we um, fell down on was milk. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get any milk. Um, but that was fine because actually as it happens we had some milk left from the week before we buy those big four pinters and um, so we had actually I think we had two of those left from the week before and so you know we're not going to be too bad off for milk and of course you know we can easily go and pop and buy some other bits if we need them but you know that was fine and then um the only other thing that had happened was <laughs> my middle son had used up all the frozen blueberries, um, which we kind of have for things like either putting onto porridge or making smoothies, things like that. And he had used them all up. So I thought, oh, I must buy some frozen blueberries. And um, they were obviously on like an offer. So I bought them. They were two packets for three pounds, I think. So I bought them. Well, lo and behold, he also bought them. So we ended up with, you know, a lot of blueberries, which normally, you know, it's not like a thing that I buy every week. We generally have blueberries like for ages. So, um, you know, they weren't kind of something that we would desperately need to kind of replenish every five minutes. They, you know, they would last for a long time. So he bought the blueberries as well. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, and cheese. Um, so we seem to then have several things of cheese you know because obviously I think my son my eldest son bought some cheese my husband bought some cheese and um, we already had some cheese left over from the weekend um, so yeah we ended up with quite a lot of cheese but <coughs> I mean again that's absolutely fine because you know of course that will get used so we did laugh and said you know well, we'll just have to have lots of cheese and blueberries, won't we? But no, I mean, it was it was fun. And um, yeah, I mean, we did get quite a good variety of food. And actually, you know, the boys were quite sensible. They bought proper, proper things as well. Um, you know, it wasn't kind of like completely disaster. And of course, you know, we did have kind of a few basics and things like that in the cupboards. We had like some pasta sauce. We had some jars of pasta and, you know, those kinds of things already in the in the um in the cupboard so it was not like we were going to go hungry you know if the worst came to the worst um but yeah so that was quite fun and everyone thought it was hilarious you know and really good fun and we all obviously as well said you know we would all buy one or two things in our shop for my daughter like for her choices if you see what I mean because of course she didn't get she didn't get a budget so um we all agreed that, you know, we would all buy a couple of things that she specifically kind of wanted. So, you know, like my son, he bought some choco rice that she likes to have for breakfast. He got that in his budget for her. And, you know, I bought some like fairy cake things that she likes and um, some smarty yogurts that she likes, you know. So, yeah, everyone kind of got the things that they wanted to get. So <laughs> that was kind of how that went. And I just thought, you know, and I did say, well, I, you know, I don't really care. You know, it's only one week. I don't really care what food we end up with. If we have nothing, we have nothing. I just don't want to hear any more moaning. You know, because my gosh, it's so tedious hearing people just saying, oh, there's nothing to eat constantly. When, you know, the cupboards are pretty full. What they mean is there's just nothing to eat that they fancy eating, you know. So, um, yeah. It was kind of a gamble, but actually, as it happens, it's worked out okay. Um, we do have our roast dinner today, um, so we will be having the roast dinner today. We'll see how we get on with that. Um, you know, 
I might come to make it and find that we haven't really got everything we needed, but hopefully it will be okay. Um, yeah, so we'll kind of see, but I think everyone thought it was really fun. I mean, unfortunately, it may be actually backfired on me that I, I expected everyone to kind of say, oh, we won't ever do this again. You know, we'll be more grateful for mum's efforts on the shopping. But actually, I have to say, they all are quite liking it so far. <laughs> you know, everyone's kind of like, oh, we might just do our shop like this every week. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, well, I mean, we're not going to obviously do our shopping like that every week. But what I mean is we'll see how we get on, you know, once um, it gets to the actual end of the week. Because we might then find that there's nothing really to actually keep everyone going. And maybe then they'll decide to um, be a bit more grateful and kind of, you know, enjoying the things that we normally have. I don't know. But anyway, so it was a bit of fun and, you know, just something to kind of take everyone's minds off of, um, you know, what's going on, I guess. So, yeah. There we go. Okay. Right. Now, I did stop the camera, so I'm not so sure what time we're actually up to let me have a look 19 minutes I think I stopped it at around 20 minutes so I could probably make just one more so we'll just do one more okay um, no. oh well let's just do another one. Oh no actually let's do one with the one with these roses okay yeah it's always so shocking how much food that you know teenage boys well and and six-year-old girls can actually put away they're just constantly eating Oh, and um, also we're watching The Crown now. Now, I know that lots of people have watched The Crown and, you know, of course it's, you know, it's been around for ages because I think they're up to like series three or possibly four now. Um, but I, I don't know why. It just didn't really appeal to me that much. And um, I didn't actually realise that it started with the current queen. I thought it started kind of, you know, way back. I thought it was more like Queen Victoria or something for the first series. But... It starts with the current queen and um, kind of, yeah, escalates quite quickly from when she came to, um, you know, to rule from when she kind of took over. And um, yeah, I have to say, really, really, really good. Really enjoying it. And my husband's really enjoying it as well. Um, I think I've said before, but he doesn't particularly like, you know, all the kind of murder mystery-ish type things that are really generally my favourite things to watch. He doesn't really like those. Neither does my elder son. Um, so generally I kind of watch those things with my middle son. We love those dramas that they have on the BBC and things, you know, which are often kind of murdery and, um, you know, probably not very nice, not very nice topics. But yeah, we really love those dramas. And um, my husband and my middle son don't like those. So, um, yeah, it was my husband, really, who... Well, actually, I think I said, oh, should we try the crown? And I just thought, oh, you know, we'll just see what it's like. Oh, it's so good. Now, I've forgotten the lady's name who's playing the queen. I know that they've had several different um, people play the queen, obviously, at different stages in her life. But obviously, we're on the first series. So, at the moment, she's youngish and it's Foy. What's what's the lady's name she was in the girl with the dragon tattoo she's that lady um oh gosh what's her name claire claire foy um she is playing the queen at the moment oh my gosh she is so good her voice is ah oh, if you shut your eyes you would honestly think you were listening to the queen she's really really good so um yeah and I don't know who the actor is who's playing Prince Philip, but he also is playing the part brilliantly well. I do recognise him. I can't think what, you know, what he's been in, but 
oh, they've cast it brilliantly. Absolutely brilliantly. So, yeah, we're really enjoying that. And obviously the good news is there's quite a few seasons of that. So, I mean, we're going to have quite a few to, um, you know, to keep us going. So that's really good because, I mean, sometimes you start watching something, but actually there's not really, you know, there's not many episodes because I finished Emily in Paris, which I also really loved. Oh, it was so gorgeous to see you know, all the lovely views of Paris itself. I mean, that was just, oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, and the girl who played Emily, oh, she's so pretty and lovely to watch. And oh, it was just a lighthearted, fun series. But unfortunately, that just seemed to be just one season. And, you know, we flew through that. So, um, yeah, really lovely series to watch. But, you know, sort of shame that there was only kind of one season I think it might have been eight or ten episodes um so the crown obviously what's quite good is that will keep us going for a little while now well hopefully although we're we're flying through that too I mean generally we start watching it you know about nine o'clock normally I generally fall asleep my husband continues watching it so what happens is the following night <laughs> He has to re-watch about, you know, the last half an hour or so of the one that we were watching the night before, the one that I fell asleep in and he managed to watch the whole of. So, yeah, we re-watch that and then... Um, sorry, I just noticed this seems to be coming apart. It probably doesn't really matter, but let's press that down again. Um, yeah, so we have to kind of re-watch the bit that I miss then we can start watching obviously <clears throat> either the next episode or you know wherever we've seen it up to we don't always watch like a full episode if you see what I mean um so yeah it's kind of slower going for him because obviously he's having to re-watch it all the time whereas I'm just falling asleep through it but but not because it's not entertaining just because you know I generally, I'm kind of on my laptop till pretty late, till about quarter to, quarter to ten. And um, I just kind of put it down, you know, for about the last kind of 20 minutes. And then that's it. By about ten past ten, I've fallen asleep. So um, I'm a bit of a lightweight, to be honest. But yeah, really good. If you haven't seen it, um, I would really recommend, you know, really, really worth a watch. It's really really good I mean you know the um kind of culture and things is obviously you know must be very very difficult to um be involved in mustn't it but you know and I don't know obviously how close to the truth you know how accurate it is but it's really good Oh, and whilst I'm um, talking of things that are really good. Oh, thank you so much to everybody who's joined the Facebook group. I'm so excited. So literally, I mean, I think it's like 300 members at the moment. And um, we're all having a really fun time. Lots of people have posted photos and things like that on there. So, you know, it's really great. Everyone seems to be really having a nice time on there and a lovely sense of community is kind of building. Um, I did set a challenge, which if you've not seen the challenge or if you're not a member of the group yet and you want to be, um, you know, hopefully we're going to have a really good time and, you know, we're going to have challenges and things like that. But I mean, of course, you know, you can just be a sort of, you know, silent member too. Please don't feel that you have to be on there kind of, you know, making lots of noise you know because I mean of course not everybody wants to be doing that um but you know it's just kind of dip in and out as you please um but yeah thank you so much everyone who's joined it's very exciting as I said um you know last week when I kind of announced the group I mean I'm not sure how kind of much my involvement will be because obviously you know I'm probably not best placed to actually um, you know be kind of involved all the time because of course you know I'm, 
well, I mean, I'm not saying other people aren't busy. That just comes across a bit rude. So, I, yeah, I don't want to kind of come across rude. But, you know, at the moment, I'm obviously, um, you know, really enjoying it. And I will try and go on there as often as I can. But, you know, I hope that you will all find it a really, you know, valuable space and, um, you know, safe space to kind of do everything. And please don't feel that you have to kind of wait for my lead or anything like that. It's it's a communal group. And, um, you know, hopefully we're all going to be learning and sharing from one another. And, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, just make it, make it your own and, um, you know, in, enjoy it and get involved kind of as you as you wish so but that's very exciting and the challenge video I've I've put a challenge vid video on there just a little short one just explaining the challenge and you know lots of people have already joined in the challenge which is amazing and I have done my video of my project which I will then put onto YouTube um I'm not sure when that will be posted, but I wanted to give people a really good chance to do their projects without sort of influencing, um, you know, or dictating kind of to them the type of thing that you had to produce. Because, of course, you know, it's everybody's individual projects. You know, I didn't want to kind of sway people or, you know, suggest that there was a way to do it or anything like that. So, um, yeah. But very, very excited. So thank you so much. It's really great. Really, really great. And the other thing is, um, some of you may have noticed, oh my goodness, at the weekend, I hit 25,000 subscribers. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this. It's such an amazing thing. I just feel literally... I'm kind of like, yeah, embarrassed to kind of even say it because it feels just so, you know, incredible. So thank you so, so much to everybody who has supported me in getting me to there because, um, you know, without you guys, of course, I wouldn't be here at all. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, I will be doing a giveaway. Um, I'm just trying to put something together. I'm quite busy at the moment because... I'm also trying to put something together for December. Um, I've got something planned for December. I hope it's going to go to plan. You know, I hope I will be able to pull it off, but it's going to be very time tight, if you see what I mean, because it's a bit ambitious. But it was my son's idea, and I feel really, you know, it, it was a really great idea, and I would love to do it. But whether or not I'm going to pull it off, I'm not sure. So I'm, yeah, super busy trying to you know manage to pull that off but we will see and the other thing is I haven't um done really any Christmas videos yet I've only done the canvas so of course I'm going to try and do some Christmas videos I have filmed two so far struggling a little bit because I'm not really in the zone for Christmas yet um just yeah Christmas I'm a very last minute person so to be honest for me this feels so early that I'm struggling to get into the zone a little bit. But, I mean, hopefully I will get there and, um, <laughs> you know, but, yeah. So I have done two Christmas videos so far and I will put them up soon. So I'm not sure when because the other thing is I have done a few other videos which now may have to be pushed back and it might end up that they won't go up now until next year um, because of now what I've got planned for doing in December. So, you know, we'll just have to kind of see. I'm going to decorate one of these pockets up. So we've made five, which actually I think is not bad going because they're quite a, um, you know, labour intensive pocket because they've got, you know, quite a bit of gluing and sticking and cutting and things like that. So let's just decorate one, one up here. So these are my little vintage photos or postcards and um, these are actually shrunk down, printed in, I think, 50% size. So I'll just take that one. Okay. Yeah, a bit waffly there, but <laughs> I wasn't trying to bombard people with information. But I really love these mass making sessions as I feel they're a really great opportunity to, um, you know, be able to kind of share with you guys what's coming up and things. So, um, yeah, I have got lots of things coming up, but as I say, it's just kind of time dependent and um, 
I'm really, really, really hoping to be able to pull off the Christmas thing because it just would be awesome if I could. And hopefully it will be super fun for you guys too. So um, we'll just have to see. But that's what I'm kind of focusing my efforts on at the moment is trying to do that. But there's a lot of work involved to do it. So I'm not sure how I'm going to get on. Um, yeah, so that's that. And as I say, you know, the other things that I have done, they may have to now be pushed back to January because it may be that actually you know, by doing some Christmas projects and things, they obviously would take precedence in being uploaded. So yeah, just kind of a little bit of forewarning there that if you see videos in January that seem very kind of like random stuff that I'm chatting about, it may be that I've actually filmed them like, you know, back in sort of October. But they just have to be kind of moved back. Just going to see if I want one of my street street names and also I do apologize I'm not sure I actually said any of the papers that I used so this here is my Covent Garden papers this is the Paris bouquet papers these uh, oh my gosh what are they called I can't remember nope sorry these are the Paris bouquet and these are the Oh, what are they called? Vintage. Mm -mm, I can't remember, I'm afraid. And this is the Paris Daisy. So sorry, I've just got a complete and utter blank as I went to say it. Um, yeah, and these are obviously my street names. So. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I mean as well, you know, I'm also kind of putting together a little something for obviously a giveaway. So I've kind of got quite a few things going on. So um, a little bit scatty, I'm afraid, but it's just kind of everything's, um, everything's suddenly coming together at the same time. You know, Christmas, um, you know, the Facebook group, all of that kind of stuff. It's all just coincided and yeah, probably probably very poor planning on my part to be honest but hopefully it's um it's all going to be fine okay let's have a look so i've got some of this lace which might look quite pretty i think this lace i actually pulled off of something else to be fair so i'm just wondering I might just staple that across the bottom let's just pop this on actually do i want some doily behind there just got this urge to put some doily and for some reason white an urge to put some white doily down let's just have a look sometimes I just really love using the odd splash of white in with kind of when it's all inky you know and inked up it's just sometimes really nice to then just break it up with just something white I don't know why but I kind of quite like that okay there we go put that down there ah and I just remembered also the name of my papers so these ones here are the pink Parisian and the pink Parisian papers, there are um, ephemera pieces and there are background pages to those as well. And there are for the Paris Daisy as well. Um, and then the Paris Bouquet, they are just background pages. There's no ephemera part to those. Um, yeah, the Covent Garden, also no ephemera part to those either. Um, but they do tie in very nicely with the, you know, the uh, street names. So, and I mean, the street names, hopefully, would be really nice with everything, to be honest. So what I might do is pop this down as a little bit of a pocket as well. Like that. 
Yeah, so hopefully I'll remember to let you know next week how we get on for the rest of the time that's left on our food shop. I mean, like I say, if nothing else, I'm just hoping it's going to kind of cut the moaning down. But yeah, judging by everyone so far, I think it might make them worse. And I'll be forever hearing them saying about how great it was the week that we all did our separate shop. <laughs> that will teach me, won't it? To, um, you know, just try and stop them moaning. As I say, I mean, it was just a bit of fun, if nothing else, because... Um, you know, we hadn't ever done any, anything like that, obviously, before. Um, you know, so, yeah, hopefully. If nothing else, it would just go down as being a little bit of fun. Okay. So, I was wondering whether to have this piece of lace here under the market square. I think that looks quite nice, to be honest. So I'm just going to cut that out. Just going to put that there. I'm just going to hot glue this down and then I can just pop it straight down onto that lace and it will just then, you know, go through the lace and hold everything. Like that. Okay. And then I just want some lace down here, which of course now I don't have enough of that, that lace to actually use this. I mean, I could just have it kind of off to the side, I suppose. Well, that's not too bad, actually. I thought that was going to look really strange, but to be honest, it looks quite nice, actually. So perhaps I'll do that. Yeah, um... Sometimes the glue just makes all this noise and um, very little movement. Okay. There we go. And let's put some bling on there because that's just going to make it look gorgeous. So you've also got a little black bow. I wonder whether we could have that there. Oh, that just finishes that off lovely, doesn't it? Again, I'll just hot glue that down. Yeah, it's funny because um, obviously I'm seeing everybody else's Christmas videos and, um, you know, I must really get more in the swing of it. It's just for me, I just think, oh, until the 1st of December, I'm not really feeling it. But, you know, I realise that obviously, you know, you guys probably want to see the videos now. So as you have time to do things. Um... But when you're not feeling it, then what happens is your, um, you know, your projects take forever. So what's happened with the two projects I've done so far? Wow, they took absolutely ages. So this is on top of my mixed media canvas, which that also took ages. But I made a Christmas card, which will be coming up. And um, that also took about an hour and a half. So I've edited that video as much as I possibly could um, to cut it down to, you know, about an hour and 10 minutes or an hour and seven minutes that hopefully will still make enough sense, um, you know, with a lot being cut out. But yeah, it took me an hour and a half to make one card because it was not really, you know, I'm just not feeling the Christmas thing yet, I think. But anyway, hopefully it will, uh, you know, hopefully once I do a couple of Christmas projects, I'll get more into the swing of it. But sometimes it takes a while. Right. So let's just pull in something that I can kind of show you as a journal page. I don't think I've got a journal page on the go. No, let me just see. No, just looking for something I can actually kind of use like a journal page to kind of just demonstrate. Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? Right, let's just pull in something else. Okay. Oh, come on. Surely I've got something. Right, here we go. Here we go. So our finished pocket, and that's how it would look on a page. So aren't they just gorgeous? So you've got your top loading pocket here, pocket here, pocket here, and then you've got a pocket here. And of course, you know, you could glue it down on three sides, and you could also then have a pocket at the side. 
So they're a great pocket, aren't they? Um, you know, really versatile and, you know, really nice. And as I say, I mean, once that's stuck on the page, although it's got a lot of layers, it's not really bulky at all. So, um, yeah, they're a nice one to use. So I hope that you have fun making some and um, that you enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a great week ahead. And um, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, then. Bye.